Um, but I'll give you the official Clayton Small. He is a PhD from Gonzaga University. He um, is a, has been an elementary, middle, and high school principal on reservations and in urban communities. He has been a faculty member at the University of New Mexico, University of Montana, and Gonzaga University. He served as a CEO for Indian Health Services and directed several nonprofit organizations. His organization, Native Pride, provides prevention, wellness, healing, and leadership training throughout Indian Country. He has developed prevention programs for the Bureau of Indian Affairs, Indian Health Services, SAMHSA, and the Department of Justice. Dr. Small has comprehensive knowledge and experience in community mobilization, strategic visioning, Indian education, organizational development, youth leadership, prevention, wellness, healing, team trust building, cultural competency, and creative positive change. He conducts training and, and facilitation nationally and internationally. His programs offer leadership and hope for American Indian, Alaska Native, and First Nations people. I present to you Clayton Small. Mm. Thank you very much. She didn't have to lie so much there, but it was great. <laughs> it's good to be back in Big Sky Country. I live in the land of enchantment in uh, New Mexico, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Anybody that can spell Albuquerque, I'll give you one of my gifts that I have today. <laughs> so uh, I've lived down there for uh, going on 16 years, but uh, Montana is my homeland, uh, specifically the Northern Cheyenne Reservation, which is about an hour and a half from here. And uh, I was born and raised there, so I'm a res boy. Even though I'm a light-skinned native, uh, I'm one half degree. I think we're the only nation on the planet that has to go by a blood quantum. <laughs> Ask your neighbor what's up with that. <laughs> I'm also Mexican-American, Ogallala, Ogallala Sioux, uh, English, and French, all rolled into one tall drink of water. <laughs> How many of you have traveled to one of the seven beautiful reservations in Montana? All right. Uh, how many of you have traveled to our neighbor in Wyoming? Who can tell me what two tribes live peacefully at Wind River? All right. Eastern Shoshone and Northern Arapaho. The government, in its infinite wisdom, put enemy tribes on the same reservation, <laughs> thinking uh, they'll do each other in. But lo and behold, because of our resiliency, we intermarried and are thriving today. <laughs> same is true for the Crow in Northern Cheyenne. So, uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. Uh, how many of you are working on your wellness? I'm going to focus on personal growth and development today, celebrating life, right? How many of you are glad to be alive today? So I don't want anybody to get cynical this afternoon, to go all gloom and doom. Uh, I don't want anyone to be chicken little today and go around and say the sky is falling. Tell your neighbor it's a beautiful day. <laughs> now, now clear your throat. <clears throat> say it again, it's a beautiful day. All right. <laughs> so uh, this is going to be an interactive session. We're going to talk about cultural competency, but at the same time, we're going to have a lot of fun. So if, uh, how many of you are sitting next to someone who's way too serious? <laughs> so poke him or her in the ribs and tell them right now, lighten up, get a life. <laughs> The sky is not falling. All right, so we're going to have fun. I'm going to shout out a couple of ground rules. 
Ground roll one, we're gonna have fun. And please don't take anything personal. Tell your neighbor that, don't take anything personal. <laughs> we don't want anyone feeling guilty or anything like that. Uh, some of the things we will share might be sensitive, so don't take it personal. Don't go on a guilt trip. How many of you here are raging codependents? We have a lot of nurses in the house. <laughs> Codependency is when you try to save the world. Meanwhile, your own life is going up in flames. How many of you are uh, made a New Year's resolution to try to get better at setting boundaries? Drawing a line in the sand and learning how to say no. Tell your neighbor, work on it. <laughs> All right, uh, I also want us to focus on strengths today. We all have gifts and talents. Uh, there's always um, bumps in the highway, right? And so if we focus on our strengths and our gifts and talents, uh, those bumps in the highway uh, aren't gonna be so overwhelming, right? So let's do that. Tell your neighbor, focus on strengths. And third one, we're going to celebrate life, it, even as we are aging. Tell your neighbor, celebrate life. How many of you, by show of hand, know somebody who's old and wise? You see them as a role model, example. You say to yourself, someday that's going to be me. Right? We all have, have that. So, how many of you know somebody who's just old? <laughs> how about old, twisted, bitter, stinky, rotten, and hard to look at? <laughs> so tell your neighbor that won't be me. Because we're going to make changes, right? We're going to reinvent ourselves. And how many of you have a couple of degrees from a school of hard knocks? <laughs> Tell your neighbor that's the best degree to have. <laughs> right? We learn from our mistakes, right? Hopefully. Hopefully. So, very good. Um, so, as my introduction said, I'm a recovering school and university administrator. <laughs> recovering uh, IHS, Indian Health Service CEO. Uh, we have a fabulous nonprofit based out of New Mexico called Native Pride. Uh, check out our website, it's awesome. You'll turn it on and you'll listen to some beautiful flute music, a lot of photos, descriptions of our curriculum that we take all over Indian country. So our website is nativeprideus.org. Tell your neighbor, check it out. <laughs> I do a lot of work in Montana by design because uh, this is where I'm from, but we travel internationally and I'm always on the road uh, doing the work I love. How many of you are doing the work you love that the Creator put you on this earth to do? That should be worth an applause, shouldn't it? Now, how many of you can't wait to retire from your state or federal job so you can really do what you want? <laughs> it's all good. So uh, let me ask everyone to stand up. Push your chair in. We're going to move around a little. I brought some incentive prizes. Uh, I'm going to give out about 24 of these. Beautiful ink pens that never run out of ink with our logo on them and a really nice keychain that has a light for when you get lost in the dark. How many of you need one of those? Okay. But you have to win these. How many of you are competitive, like to win? Well, you're going to win. So tell your neighbor that means you're going down. 
<laughs> so uh, everybody, hands in the air like this. And uh, this comes from a rodeo arena. I'm a recovering cowboy also, rodeo cowboy. Indians can also be cowboys and cowgirls. So pump them up and down. Tell your neighbor on both sides, step up. <laughs> All right. Uh, get, walk around and go lock arms with another person and get into teams of two quickly. Quickly, quickly, daylight's burning. All right, teams of two. Quickly, raise your hand if you don't have a teammate. You can find each other. If you don't have a teammate, raise your hand. All right, uh, let's practice being nice to each other. In Indian country, uh, pe our people are famous for gossiping, backstabbing, glaring, fighting. So tell your neighbor, don't even go there. <laughs> Everybody clear your throat. Ahem. Tell your teammate you're handsome and beautiful. Put your uh, free hand up. Tell your teammate you're worthy. You're the bomb. You're the bomb. You, rock. you rock. You're hot. You're hot. <laughs> Work with me. <laughs> All right. So unhook, touch each other shoulder to shoulder. You might have to go up or down. <laughs> OK, now I'm going to teach you some of our native words. All right, so uh, crow, crow country, we're in crow country. So uh, our crow relatives, their word for hello, how are you, what's up, is shodaje. Tell that to your neighbor. The answer would be itchik, I'm good. Now you got to put your hand out, good, all right. Uh, elbow to elbow, Cheyenne word. Pivot means good, pivot. Good morning is pivawona. All right, hip to hip. <laughs> now, if your partner is a man, tell him, show me. <laughs> How many of you women perpetuate the stereotype about men? They have no butts, flat back there. <laughs> so make sure you know your teammates got hips. All right, from our Lakota Sioux relatives, Fort Peck Reservation, North and South Dakota, Minnesota. Uh, hello, in Lakota is uh, wash day. If it's really good, Lilo wash day. If it's awesome, it's Wash Day Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> right. Knee to knee. You recovering athletes, be careful. Blackfeet country. Blackfeet nation. Oki is hello. All right. Heel to heel now. Don't click them, you'll end up in lame deer. <laughs> now, we're going to go all American with this one. Throw your upper body into your teammate and say, What's up? <laughs> okay, leave this partner to tell him, See you around, go get a new partner. <laughs> quickly, quickly. <laughs> move it, move it, work it. Introduce yourself. All right. Tell them you're handsome and beautiful. You're worthy. 
You rock. You're the bomb. You're hot. Work with me. All right. Tallest person in each team, raise your hand, whoever that is. Tallest person. Tell your shorter teammate hello down there. <laughs> shorter teammate, say hello up there. Unhook and face each other now. Now, friends and allies of native people, which most of you are. I see there's a few Indians in the house. So friends and allies, because you're our friend and ally, you can do what I'm going to ask you to do. Keep one eye on your teammate and one eye on me. <laughs> All right, tall teammates, put your hands up. One leg in front of the other, facing your shorter teammate. Now put your arms in front of you, like this. Tall teammates, tell your shorter teammate, hey, I'm buff and tough. <laughs> Shake those forearms a little. Shorter teammate, I trust you. All right. Taller teammates, anchor yourself. You're grounded like a tree stump. Shorter teammates, stand straight and tall. Touch each other palm to palm. Feel the power. When I say go, short teammates, you're going to do five full deep body push-ups. Tall teammates, don't let them crumble. Go. Oh, yeah, give it up, give it up. <laughs> All right. Shorter teammates, your turn. Tell your tall teammate, I'm buff and tough too. <laughs> Taller teammate, I trust you down there. All right, palm to palm, tall drinks of water, you're gonna give us five, go. All right, now. Everybody get into a threesome. Teams of three. All right, teams of three. We're warming up. I have this hand drum for a reason. We're going to have a dancing contest shortly. Tell your teammates we're going to tear it up. TCB taking care of business. All right. So if you're a friend and ally of Indian people, I'm going to give you three shoe categories. And in your team of three, pick one of those shoes in a nonviolent way. Shoe number one, if you're a Indian or friends of Indians, you should have a pair of moccasins in that closet. So, one of you will be a moccasin. Shoe number two. Indians are awesome athletes. Nike makes a shoe just for Indians called the N7. So one of you will be an N7. And Indians are horsemen and horsewomen. We wear boots. Cowgirls wear those thick soled, round toed, exotic leather boots. But it's not enough. They stamp rhinestones on them. We're going to call that shoe the bling bling. So, moccasin, N7, bling bling. Pick your shoe right now. Okay, now, here's one of my judges. He's totally unbiased and objective. 
Natalie, come up here. A mom's going to be a judge also. Where is she? Is she in the house? Who else is here from the committee that organized this huge, awesome event? I got my three judges. <laughs> Get up here, judges. Don't be voting for your relatives the way they do in Indian country. <laughs> All right, we're going to have three rounds of competition. There'll be one winner in each uh, round. Now, if you want to win, your two teammates got to help you out. So tell them right now, work with me here. All right, all the moccasins, raise your hand. This is your round. This is the moccasin round. So here's what we're going to do. Moccasins, you're going to send your two teammates out to everybody in this room, as many people as possible, to do something positive and creative. Now, you can say, go shake everybody's hand. Go high five everybody. That'll be really sweet, but you won't win. <laughs> the judges are looking for singing, jumping, kicking. Got it? Judges, you're going to pick whatever team looks the most outlandish. But! Legal and not obscene. Moccasins, send them out right now. Here we go. Work it, move it. All right, judges, give me one team that was over the top. Dan Hollingsworth. Dan Hollingsworth. Who was the moccasin? Tell us who, where's our roving mic? Where's our Vanna White mic? <laughs> All right, ladies, before you get your prize, you got to come up here and do an exhibition of what got the judges' attention. Get up here, come on, all the way across. Tear it up, show us the move. Oh, we got to clean it. Yeah, yeah. Do it, Jim. Okay, come on, Kenny. <laughs> We're off to see the wizard, the water wizard of Oz. <laughs> okay, moccasin, come get your gift. Flashlight, pen, your choice. All right, N7s, raise your hand. This is your round. N7, send them out, quickly. They're roving. <laughs> oh yeah, look around, judges. Seven. All right, judges, give me the winner. The gallon of the deep sea thing. Okay, the lady in pink over here. The judge is coming to get you. Who was the N7 in your team? There's our winner. Bring your teammate out here. Show us the move. Zumba! <laughs> Come get your gift. Okay. All right, now, 
Bling, bling, you gotta go where no one's gone before. Send them out. Denise Armstrong's team. Denise Armstrong, get your team up here. Yes, and team. Who was the bling bling winner right there? Ladies, show us the move. You ready? Okay. You they got to get on a uh, table. We'll pretend like it's a chair. Oh, yeah. We better just. We love you, man. We love you. <laughs> Okay, now, on a scale of risk taking one to 10, we've gone about five. So last activity on a scale of one to 10, it's about a 12. We're gonna do a dance contest. And it's called the Jackrabbit Shuffle or the Mingle Mingle. So everybody, both hands in the air. These are now your Jackrabbit ears. Flop those ears and move those hips. Tell your neighbor my ears are bigger than yours. <laughs> now, turn your ears into paws. Put them under your chin, wiggle them out. Now do the back and forth. That's the basic move. Now, when I start drumming and singing, I'm gonna say some things, you gotta do them. I'm gonna say jump, so elevate, or stretch. When I say duck, get down, look around, do it, practice, duck, spin, spin around, kick, kick a leg out, yell, make some noise, yeah! so when I drum fast, you're moving fast, when I slow it down, slow down, why don't you demonstrate the dance first, oh I am, I'm moving right here, when I stop, I'll say pose. Strike your best pose right now. Pose. Ah, judges, extra points for floor pose. A floor pose. Laying on the floor. <laughs> okay, hands in the air. Now, if you want to win, you're going to probably have to come out here where the judges can see the moves. Uh, two, four, six, eight. Judges, you get two dancers each. Get on the stage, judges, so you can see the action. Are we ready? Tell your neighbor you're going down. <laughs> now. While you're going, I want you to chant the word mingo, 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 mingo. Because you're going to be mingling around. Here we go. Mingo, 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 mingo. Hey, oh, no. Walk around, walk around. Get to a new spot. <laughs> Tell somebody you're going down. All right, this is the slow and graceful round. Mingo, 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 hey, oh, no. Pose. 
Walk around, walk around, walk around. Last round right now, fast and furious. Get ready. Bingo, 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 bingo. Judges, get your two up here. Bring them up. Bring them up. <laughs> We're going to have eight champions right now. Bring them up, judges. Jack Rabbit champions right here. <laughs> Mingo Mingo champions. Get your champion dancers, boys and girls. Bring them up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bring them up. Yeah, two each. Native people, they use their lower lips like this. It means get up here. <laughs> All right, Natalie, let's let the champions introduce themselves. Do we have a mic working? Big voice champions, tell us who you are, where you're from. Jane Nelson Billings. <laughs> um, Bonnie Cook Billings. <laughs> Kathleen Honkoop Huntley. <laughs> Louise Olson Billings. Sherry Acey and I work in Harden. <laughs> Becky Mitchell, St. John's Billings. Okay, champions, a quick exhibition right here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Audience, get your dollar bills ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's no dice in here. <laughs> <laughs> mingo, 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 mingo. Hey, oh, no. Get your, uh, get your gift. All right, everybody, have a chair. That was a good workout. <laughs> that was your, uh, my version of Zumba. Okay, all right. Which one? Right here? Okay. 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 Let me ask the, uh, the champions, uh, the, uh, the other two teammates from N7, Moccasin and Bling Bling. I still have some gifts. Get up here and take one, please. You earned it. Give it up for those guys. Keychain or pen. Good job. To have good partners, huh? <laughs> <laughs> One for my partner. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. How did you get so positive? <laughs> How are I'm, you? I'm a pro Indian. Oh. You're not positive. <laughs> <laughs> now, hey, one, two, I got about five more up here. If you think the judge has overlooked you, the first one's up here. Get up here and get a prize. <laughs> you got to be quick. Come on, move it. There's five. Six, four, two, two left. I'm going to toss them out. Oh, that's too far. <laughs> All right. So uh, let me start off with a story, a coyote story. So, uh, Coyote stories are very old. They're, a coyote is an archetype, like Carl Jung's uh, archetypes. Um, symbol, <laughs> metaphor. The coyote as a trickster uh, got into all kinds of mischief and trouble. Betrayed his friends. Um, so uh, coyote became the symbol of what not to do. All right? 
Sometimes that character is also called the raven, iktomi, different names. So one day, the monster came into the valley, Yellowstone Valley, started devouring all the animals into his stomach. The animals fled. And as they were running, they saw Coyote the trickster. Coyote, save us! You're mystical, magical. You have the power. So Coyote jumps in front of the monster, calls it vulgar names, kicks it, throws dirt and rocks. The monster throws Coyote into the rim rocks. He bounces back, goes after the monster. The monster gets sick and tired of coyote and devours coyote into its stomach, where it's slimy, dark, stinky, and rotten. Coyote lights a match, looks around. There's all these animal friends, cold, afraid. Coyote, save us. Coyote had a vision that quick. He said, I'm going to strike that monster's heart four times. On the fourth time, the monster will explode. Run for your life. Start a new beginning. Sure enough, fourth strike of the monster's heart, the monster exploded. Coyote said, there you go. Run for your life. Start a new beginning. And as the animals left the monster's stomach, they became all the tribal nations that inhabit North America today. Tell your neighbor, good story. <laughs> How many of you feel like you're Coyote the Trickster? Magical, mystical. Anytime, and there were many, when Coyote, because of his trickster ways, died, his brother Fox would jump over his dead carcass four magical times and bring Coyote back to life. So these coyote stories teach our people values, what to do and what not to do. So let's transfer that coyote story to the real world for native people. Let's assume that the monster represents the things on the screen, those bumps in the highway, life's challenges, for example, aging, chronic disease and pain, loss of loved ones, drugs and alcohol, domestic violence, teenage pregnancy, HIV and AIDS, racism, poverty, colonization, oppression. All these monsters that I've just named have all impacted Native people. Our story, our, our, the story of indigenous people of North America is that, oppression, being pushed down, being forced out to go live on wasteland reservations that nobody else wanted. Our ancestors, many of them refused to go to the reservations. They were hunted down. They were put in shackles. They were put in cattle, railroad cars, and hauled off to concentration camps. And they were told, when you agree to go to the reservation, we'll let you go. Most of them died there. Many of the tribes from the Northern Plains, Montana, Dakotas, Wyoming, ended up in Fort Marion, Florida, in a concentration camp. The definition of what I'm describing is called colonization, where the greater power wants something from the weaker nation and, and, and uh, come uh, hell or high water, they're going to take it. So they wanted land and gold from indigenous people, and they took it. So as I'm talking now, I don't want anyone to feel guilty. So tell your neighbor, don't even go there. Don't even go there. <laughs> tell your other neighbor, take a deep breath. 
breathe. <laughs> there you go. As atrocious as the Jewish Holocaust was, there was even a greater Holocaust in America that no one talks about, that the, our history books don't tell the truth about. So I think one of the things I want to challenge you all to do in good faith is to uh, revisit the history of Native people in North America. And, and what you're going to find is that colonization is a part of the human spirit. Colonization will never go away. It's a part of who we are as human beings. To always want something from another nation that doesn't have the military power to defend themselves. So what happened to Native people was inevitable. How it happened was unconscionable. That's the history of Native people. Being forced to adopt a form of government that was not what they wanted. Forced to go to reservations, diseases, alcohol, boarding schools, churches, the list goes on and on. How many of you uh, know this, know this history? So how many of you now can maybe understand while native elders, men and women, might not trust you, might be angry, might be hostile, might get stuck, in their healing journey. I love the presentation before on spirituality. How many of you listened to that? Good job, yeah. I heard her say spirituality is about healing from these monsters that get in our path, in our journey in life. How do we bounce back from the monsters that block our path? Do we stay down? Do we get up and brush ourselves off and keep going into that light of goodness? That's what we want for our elders, right? They have this kind of a past, our native elders. Historical trauma and everyday trauma today. And, and some of them, by the grace of the Creator and their spirituality and their healing, are moving on in a good way. Some of them are stuck, angry. How many of you get angry? How many of you know anger is a healthy emotion? Anger is normal. Tell your neighbor, hello, we all get angry. <laughs> How many of you express your anger in a healthy way? <laughs> We have a lot of hostile native elders and uh, middle-aged native people and young teenage natives who are very hostile and probably for good reason. We need to learn how to negotiate those feelings, to uh, move on, to acknowledge that our history was traumatic. What happened to our ancestors, unthinkable. And yet here we are in the 21st century. How do we move on? How do we honor our native history, ancestors, language, cultures, beautiful ceremonies, rituals? We still have all of that. But we have to be on the computer. We have to uh, be out there in the world. That's challenging to do, but it's doable. Our native people are, are, are doing just that. Honoring their native way of life and living in the modern world. So as we do that, we need help from friends and allies in that healing process. It's a healing journey. It's a spiritual journey. We all have those challenges. We all have those bumps in the highway. How do we help each other navigate through them? So let me give you guys a hostility survey. If you have a pen and pencil, you're going to do a little bit of writing. Two ground rules here. One, be honest. Tell your neighbor, be honest here. <laughs> Tell your other neighbor, get out of denial. 
So before I have you do the survey, these circles in the middle are interrelated. Suicide is a major issue among Native people, especially our Native men. Native men have the highest risk factors in all four of those circles. Highest among all races in America today. The role of our Native men has been diminished. We're not sure what our role is. Protectors, providing. And yet, unemployment on most of our reservations is 90, 95%. How do you do that as a man, as a father and a husband when there's nothing there? That causes us to turn to violence, drugs, alcohol. One out of three Indian men ends up in prison. So 50% of suicides have drug and alcohol involvement. Violence, not only is America the strongest nation on the planet, we're one of the most violent countries in the world. Tell your neighbor, hello. Did you know that? Is there violence on our reservations? Yeah. Is there violence in America? Oh, yeah. How do we stop the violence? Gangs, bullying. Trauma, historical and everyday trauma. Depression. So if we focus on the strengths that are in the big circle, those monsters in the middle won't be such a big deal. Remember earlier I said we're going to focus on our strengths. We're not going to get cynical. We're not going to go chicken little. Focus on our gifts and our talents. So write three words down. Word one, these are the three parts of hostility. First word is cynicism, C-Y-N-I-C-I-S-M, cynicism. Next to it, put attitude. When you're cynical, it's a dirty, rotten, negative attitude. Who's in charge of our attitude? Who can change it? All right. Second word is anger. Anger is a feeling, emotion, normal. Express it in a way that's healthy and legal. Three tips on anger management. Here's what you do when you're angry. If you do these three things, you're practicing good anger management. Tip one, when you're angry, don't hurt yourself. Tell that to your neighbor. Don't even think about it. Tip two, when you're angry, don't hurt others. Who do we hurt when we're angry? People we love the most. Our spouse, children, brothers, sisters. How many of you take a time out when you're too angry? You know it's just not the time. So tell your neighbor, timeouts are good. How long should the time out last, 20 years? No, oh, couple hours, overnight, sleep on it, pray about it. Calm down. <laughs> Tip three, get better at forgiveness. Forgive yourself, forgive others, let it go. Tell your neighbor that, just let it go. Give it to the creator. So if you can do those three things when you're angry, doing a good job. And the third part of hostility is aggression. Put next to that, it's a behavior. What kind? It's a bullying behavior. Who's in charge of our behavior? Who can change it? All right, amen. Now, on a scale of zero to 10, zero, one, two, three, lower numbers, that's not a problem for me. I'm good to go. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, that's a problem. I gotta work on that. Give yourself three scores for how you are with your cynicism, anger management, and aggression. Knowing that you're being honest and you're not in denial. Zero to ten, three numbers. Now add those numbers up. You have a total hostility score. Here's why it's important to address hostility. The medical and psychological research says hostile people die young. Stresses, stress-related diseases, heart attacks, strokes, cancer, lupus, diabetes. We keep all that stuff in here. Our body fails to thrive and we die young. The life expectancy for native people was 50 years old until about 20 years ago. If you lived beyond 50, you were lucky. Imagine that. How many of you want to live to be golden age? 
You want to dance when you're 100. So tell your neighbor, work on your hostility. <laughs> None of your three individual scores should be higher than three or four. Your total score shouldn't be higher than 10 or 12. Now, if your score is in triple digits, it means, hey, I got some work to do. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> so, at your table, tell your neighbor which of these three things do you need to work on? What you need to work on. How many of you are going to work on this hostility stuff? All right, let me put it in the form of a ledger art for native people. Uh, ledger art is the artwork our ancestors did 100 years and more ago when they were incarcerated oftentimes for refusing to go to the reservation. They were given bookkeeping, ledger paper, and pencils, colored pencils. And they drew these beautiful image, images of what it was like when life was good and they were free. So next time you go to the library, look up American Indian ledger art. There's the history of native people in living color. This one is a description of the Battle of 1876 where General Custer and the 7th Cavalry were rubbed out. To native people, the greatest victory of, on the northern plains. So the warrior on the yellow horse has g weapons and guns tied to his saddle. There's bullets and arrows. There's death and violence all around him. He captures this, the flag. And instead of continuing to kill, he counts coup on the enemy, touches them with the flag, and rides away. The lesson for Native people and all people is we don't have to be violent, aggressive, and destructive to show our strength and courage. How many of you know that being gentle takes a lot of courage? Being compassionate and empathetic and caring and nurturing takes courage. So we use artwork, we use coyote stories to kind of frame the issue. People resonate with those stories and songs, ceremonies. Earlier we were talking about spirituality. Native people have fabulous renewal ceremonies. Up here on the Northern Plains, every summer, the sun dance. It renews our Earth Mother. It's a feminine renewal ceremony. It's the rebirth of everything in the universe. The woman is the central symbol of renewal, life givers. The earth is renewed and restored. Our people truly believe that. We have other ceremonies that are masculine in nature, that give us strength and courage. Are men the only ones that possess that? No. Within men and women, we possess both masculine and feminine. We have to honor both. I'm going to ask our handsome young man to come up and help me with a third image here. It's another piece of ledger art. And it shows men and women standing side by side, conducting a victory dance on the northern plains. Good man. Give him a hand. <laughs> Say it. You're hot. You're hot. <laughs> or as they say in Indian country, you're hut. <laughs> the men are on the left. Their faces are painted with charcoal, honoring the lives that were lost to ensure victory. They're using a hand drum. They're singing a victory song. The women are on the right. The women are wearing eagle feather headdresses. 
The women's faces are painted red and yellow, symbolizing love, beauty, wonder, grace. The women are wearing striped chief blankets. And they're standing side by side, dancing and singing the same victory song. Masculine and feminine, in balance, in harmony. So my dream is that our native elders will have this image in their heart and mind and spirit. Because in their healing journey, those monsters that have stopped them, slowed them down, pushed them into the ground, into the dirt, through their strengths and through our beautiful native ceremonies of renewal, they'll get up, they'll stand up, and they'll keep going forward. And the same is true for our young people who face many obstacles out there every day on the res. There's a story where a grandfather was telling his grandson about two monsters that live within us. One is good. The other is dark and evil, and they fight to see who's going to control us. And the grandson says, Grandpa, which one wins? And Grandpa says, the one that you feed. So that's why focusing on our strengths and our gifts and our talents, our spirituality, our beautiful ceremonies. You can go to any one of our reservations today. Someone is going to be putting up a sweat lodge ceremony. Someone's going to have a peyote meeting, Native American church. You sit in the big teepee and you sing and you pray all night. You come out of there in the morning and you have a breakfast and the world has changed. Our sun dances, our vision quest where we go and go without food and water on the hill for four days, four nights, and the spirits come. These are rites of passage. Our young men and women, when they go through these ceremonies, they might have been sitting on the fence saying, ah, there's not a creator, ah, there's no spirits, ah, it's a bunch of BS. And when they're in these ceremonies and those spirits come, hello, they believe. That's why these rites of passage are so critical for our young people. It marks them. It changes them forever. That from this moment on, you are now a man, you are now a woman. And with that comes responsibility. These things that I'm saying uh, are not new. Our native people know these things. But because of all the monsters that have invaded us, historically and today, we lose our way. So through friendship, through you being an ally and a healer and showing care and support, you can help and encourage our native elders to have that in their heart and to live into their golden age years with grace and dignity, beauty and wonder. So that's my work. That's my passion. Uh, this is what I do for our youth and for our adults. And I'm not alone. A lot of you do the same work, maybe with your own personality, maybe in a little different way. But you know what? We make a difference. So I honor you and I congratulate you for your good work. And uh, we need to keep doing the work, okay? So I wanna thank you for laughing and playing with me today. <laughs> Blessings to you, thank you very much. Um, Clayton, I just wanted to ask, does anybody have any questions for Clayton before he steps down? Oh, I've got one for you, Clayton. Sorry. <laughs> sorry that I saw the mic go off. Make it really tough. <laughs> well, I was in... Is it on? Here, yes, let's turn it up. Yeah. I was in a room where a nurse was trying to do just discharge planning with a native woman that had lost her leg to divide, uh, diabetes and she was trying to give her instructions for discharge and she said 
well, when my daughters get here, you can tell them. And she patiently said that several times. And then she started laughing. And she laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed.